Hello and thanks for joining us for the U.S. GNN Monthly Newscast sponsored by U.S. Glass Magazine. I'm Megan Headley. And I'm Holly Biller. First, we turn our attention to Kansas where the focus has been on energy. While the Glass Association of North America's Fall Conference took place earlier this month in Kansas City, Missouri, it was a keynote address from Kansas Governor Mark Parkinson on the potential of solar energy that was among the conference highlights. During his presentation, Governor Parkinson addressed the great potential of solar energy. Glass has the potential to affect the electricity issue in really two ways. Uh, first, in um, the development, obviously, of solar energy, and then second, in the area of energy efficiency, utilizing um, more efficient windows and, and glass products to save on the need for energy. Um, and what I want you to understand is, is how much potential there is in solar. And I'm demonstrating that by showing you what an incredibly small slice of the pie solar has right now. So, you know, whatever impact solar has had on your various companies, we haven't even begun to scratch the surface. I mean, it, 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 the, the amount of solar is so incredibly limited in this country right now um, that there is incredible opportunity. To increase that potential, Parkinson advocated the federal government's support of solar energy. The point that I'm making is simply this, that if, in fact, we're going to continue to, to advance our renewable sources of energy, whether it's wind or solar, we're going to need some help from the federal government. The price point of solar right now is simply too high for the free market to make it happen on its own. It needs a little bit of support. Following the governor, Guardian Glass Vice President Scott Thompson delved into more detail on the solar market's impact on the glass industry. 90% of the low iron glass historically produced in this business has been pattern. Okay? And that's mainly for the crystal and silicon. And part of the reason this happened was when the solar industry was so small, glass companies were not willing to convert 700 metric ton float lines to transition and make glass for, you know, 32 hours. So basically, pattern lines typically 100, 120 metric tons, very cost effective to transition and make low iron. So what happened is the crystal and silicon therefore became dominated by pattern glass, okay? So glass companies could convert architectural pattern lines to solar, which happened in Europe. To give you an idea, last year in Europe, there was 15 pattern lines making low iron solar. This year, there's seven because of the Spanish impact. So the growth of thin film PV and CSP will significantly increase the demand for low iron solar float. And so when you look in the next three years, the float business will be more impacted by CSP than it will be by PV, which is counter to a lot of what people think. Thompson explained that while the market will grow, the glass industry needs to show caution before investing in a way that will sustain growth in a controlled manner. The solar industry will often say to me, why doesn't the glass industry take solar seriously? Well, there's a couple reasons. In 2007, the total solar glass consumption worldwide was less than 0.1% of the total glass production. Okay, that's not a lot of glass. Okay, and as glass companies, we think in terms of tonnage, square meters that drive investments. So we're not about to run out and you know, invest you know, $125 million on a float line when it, it might come. So just in summary, the solar market is growing at a rapid pace. I mean, there's no doubt about it. But once again, I kind of say that 100% you know, you know, of nothing is still nothing, okay? So we need to be aware of that. We're not at the point where this is a architectural facade market. This is not a um, you know, automotive market. But by 2014, 2015, solar will be a sizable market. The energy seminars were co-sponsored by Solar Glazing Magazine. You can find this as a supplement in your next issue of U.S. Glass or as a standalone publication starting early in 2010 or by visiting the website on your screen. We'll have more on upcoming events right after this commercial break. Vitro America is a leading fabricator and wholesale distributor of architectural glass and aluminum. Our energy glaze insulated glass is IGCC certified and CBA rated for quality assurance. 
ScarGuard is the only surface protected mirror manufactured in the U.S. And Vitro America's impact safe laminated glass meets the Miami Dade code for hurricane resistant applications. When it comes to architectural glass and aluminum, whatever your needs may be, Vitro America has the solution. Visit www.vitroamerica.com. Welcome back. That is actually the topic for our next story. Welcome back to Atlanta for Glass Build America, scheduled for September 30th through October 2nd at the Georgia World Congress Center. This annual trade show for the fenestration industry provides a good meeting place for the industry, and we're certainly looking forward to meeting up with you out there. Hal and I and the rest of the staff from U.S. Glass Magazine will be in booth 2902. We'd love it if you come by, say hello, and maybe say a word or two for next month's newscast. Our viewers in the Midwest are likely familiar with the annual Glass Expo Midwest, but the next event, set for March 16th and 17th, won't be the trade show you're accustomed to. The 2010 event at the Renaissance Schomburg Hotel Convention Center, located just outside of Chicago in Schomburg, Illinois, has grown from a regional event to a national show, with several new tracks and an expanded exhibit floor. Some of the new items include Fenestration Day on March 16th, open to all in the fenestration industry, and an architect's educational forum on March 17th. These are just some of the steps that will provide a fresh take on this long-standing show for the glass industry. Visit www.glassexpomidwest.com to learn more about exhibiting or to register today. We look forward to seeing you there. In the meantime, be sure to look for updates on these stories and more on our next USGNA newscast in October when we'll be bringing the news straight to your screen once again. Thanks for watching.